scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We are so blessed. Our souls are found rest. Oh Lord. Sing it with me. Thanks, we give you thanks. When others are complaining, seeing the things they think you have not done, we are grateful. How dare we complain after all you have done? For we are so blessed, and our souls are found. One more time, just the voices. Worship Him. Reflect on the many things He's done in and through your life. For all you have done. We are so blessed and our souls Jesus Christ, we thank you. You are our confidence in this place tonight. It is because of your presence that we know lives will be changed tonight. We have come to hear you speak. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, accept our coming here tonight as a reflection of our inadequacy in ourselves. Accept our coming tonight as a recognition of our limitations. Accept our coming tonight as a communication of our dependence on you. For we will not be here if we did not trust you. Lord, we trust you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This for someone is the message God came to give you tonight. This act of worship. Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. The key to more of anything in your life is gratitude. The key to more of anything in your life, anything good, is gratitude. He took five loaves and two fish. He lifted it up and the Bible says he gave thanks. You know, sometimes we live in a world where there is such an appetite for more. More money, more fame, more this, more that. And now God wants to increase us. Motion is a sign of life stagnation is a sign of death so god wants us to move forward but you see god's system is such that you never leave where you are to the next level until you thank him sufficiently for where you are 
Hallelujah. Guilt, not guilt in a negative way, will never allow me to dare complain before God. There are too many stories in my life that show the faithfulness of God. I will be wicked and heartless to ever claim he's not faithful. So for me, if I do not have a language of gratitude, I rather not speak. I rather sing and worship him. There are too many reasons in my life. I am a testimony of how God can take a man from nothing to something. How would I be so stupid to complain? Shout around. He's giving me what money cannot buy. His presence. Listen. If you have a property, they call you a rich man. But someone can bully you and collect it. The government can seize it from you. Are we together? If you have investments all over the world, they call you a business mogul. But everything can crash and fail in one day. Are we together? If you have a political position, it is not infinite, it is not everlasting. Are we together? Even if you are a monarch, the reality of death and time can catch up with you. But when he gives you his presence, there is no way to find it and collect it from you. It's not a commodity that belongs to this earth realm. It's a reality that is beyond this realm. It will buy anything. The presence of God is the master capital. It's bigger than land. Bigger than degrees. Bigger than anything. Please believe me. The most expensive commodity is the presence of God. When you have it, you have access to kings and their treasures. When you have it, you have access to businessmen and their wisdom. When you have it, you have access to royalties and their sacrifices. They will bring to you the rewards of their years of labor and beg you to collect it in exchange for the presence of God. Never Never you think the presence of God is just a way of feeling spiritual. Then you quickly feel spiritual. Then you concentrate on what you think will make you successful. No, only a fool does that. The presence of God gave the nation of Israel gold and silver in one day. What they could not get in 430 years. The presence of God became for them a pillar of cloud by day. And of fire by night. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when you hear a man of God talk so much about the presence of God, please look up. It's easy to think the man of God is speaking because his life is now comfortable. You know, that's what people think in church. When a preacher is talking like this, you know, they feel, ah, you are doing well, you are enjoying. Why will you not talk about the presence of God? But you need to ask how the person started and what brought the person to the current level. Are we together? What you are seeing now is not a seed, it's a harvest. Are we together? Yes. Never covet any man's glory. Pay attention to the story. The story reveals the process. The story reveals the sacrifice. We live in a generation where we are obsessed with results. And that is important. But we focus so much on the end of the results. We want finished products. But we do not pay attention to how the things are made. Hallelujah. What you are learning will give you anything you admire now. So forget about the admiration and focus on the training. The training will inevitably bring you to the place of glory. Father, help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Bless you. Good evening, everybody. Just turn to your left and right and tell your neighbor good evening. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, pick up your pen, paper. Let's get to work. There's a lot to do. The Glory Revealed Part 2. Last week we started a series, The Glory Revealed. It's a series that is supposed to guide us, excuse me, and teach us the principles, how a man's life can become a reflection of all the possibilities that consist in God. Hallelujah. Please try to get last week's teaching. It's free. You can get it after the service, especially for those who are online following us. There are so many people and we love you. You are part of us. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. And I spoke to us last week and I started laying a foundation that the pursuit of godliness, please listen, the pursuit of godliness, the pursuit of relevance in the kingdom begins with an encounter. Say an encounter. The journey of a believer does not start with learning principles and laws and formulas. Business people teach you that if you want to arrive, get formula A, add it to B, and that's important. But any time you begin to study anything outside of an encounter first, it will waste your time and lead you to error. Because the kingdom is regulated by a person, not just systems. It is a person who created the systems. So you have to encounter the person Christ. Are we together? So your journey does not begin by learning about tithes and offerings, all the laws that we shared in the series before this. They are very important. But you must start with an encounter. When you meet the person, then he will guide you. Because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. There is a method. There is a formula. It seems right to a man. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. And um, we discussed the concept of glory. I'm just doing a quick recap. How that glory refers to the essence of a thing. The character. Are we together? The, 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 the word glory is from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek word is doxa. It's a reflection of the true nature. When the true nature of a thing is expressed, we call it the glory of that thing. Are we together now? And then another interesting understanding of the word glory is the possibilities. That, that's the one I want us to pay attention to. Is the one that is relevant in this series. The glory of a man means all the possibilities that are inherent within the man. The glory of this mic is revealed in its ability to amplify sound. Are we together? When you go to buy this mic now and they tell you this singular mic I'm holding is say 200,000. You look at this. Until you connect it to something, then you will see the potentials. Are we together? This is 200,000 for instance because it has an ability to amplify my sound. So I can stand here and speak and people down the second overflow and everywhere can hear. So the glory of this mic is the possibility inherent in it. Are we together now? So when we talk of the glory of God, it refers to all the possibilities that are encapsulated in the person God and that is reflected in the person Christ because Christ is the full expression of the image of God are we together so Jesus came to open us up reveal to us the glory of the father an example of the manifestation of that glory was seen in the healings when he came to people they never knew he had the supernatural ability to heal and so he would tell someone, pick up your mat, stand up and go. Glory revealed. I did tell us last week that until glory is revealed, it cannot be appreciated. Glory that is concealed cannot be appreciated. If you buy a phone, the pack is only a packaging, but the real product is inside. If you keep the pack, even if it's for 10 years, it will not profit you. But when you open it, then you see the content and you appreciate everything that is there. There are phones, for instance, that can just make calls, text messages and a few things. There are other phones that can browse at, at a level of speed. You can connect to several things, watch videos and the rest. Those possibilities are the glory 
in the phone which is an expression of the wisdom of the company that made it so the phone reflects the excellency of samsung or any other lg or whatever product are we together now so christ came as a manifestation of the glory of god the invisible god yahweh found earthly expression and everything jesus did was a sample of what god can do he didn't show us everything he only showed us small and said you continue and he sent the spirit of glory are we together to continue so the bible was not supposed to just end with jesus we are epistles we are an unfolding of other dimensions of glory that are possible if jesus were still on the earth would have written more than would have written probably there would have been an episode where he walked on a zinc and came down probably there would have been an episode where he made a dry ground to be full of water but the holy spirit came and through jesus showed us an example that we should follow in his steps so the goal of this series is to teach us the mystery behind spiritual alignment that can make a man become a reflector of the glory of god that all there is all that there is to you is not just your human nature there is more say amen, amen. so the glory of a thing reflects the possibilities and um, we began to explain how that one of the keys to experiencing the glory of god is to believe that there is such a possibility you see brothers and sisters god is not a man that he should lie are we together not the son of man that he should repent if a jimmy has fifty thousand hidden in his suit pocket is hidden and we cannot see it if he tells me and says i have fifty thousand my attitude towards him will show whether i believe it or not are we together if i tell you right now on this table there is a phone there is this assuming you cannot see it anything you cannot see you will have to use my person to validate your trust because you cannot see it are we together so faith is that response that is entirely based on your perception of who god is because until there is a manifestation you do not yet know once you have seen it once and again it's no longer faith it's called trust trust is based on a track record of a man's experience faith is based on your knowledge of his person if i tell you after service there will be free bus transport to take you assuming you're a new person who just came here it's up to you to look at me and gauge could this person be lying and then if you wish you can ask somebody who has had an experience with me the last time he spoke like this was there a boss and the person tells you yes so you believe not because you have seen a boss you believe because you think i am too big to lie to you that's what faith is predicated upon so when god says i want to reveal my glory it's up to you to first believe could god be joking is he playing games with me does he have the ability to back up his claims and this is why we have the bible the bible is a compendium of god's speakings versus their manifestations in the life of people abraham i will make you at the end of it he made abraham he told gideon you're a mighty man of valor at the end of it Gideon became a mighty man. He told the apostles you will receive power at the end of it. The Bible says, then he swore by himself that by these two immutable things, it will be impossible for God to lie to the end that you may find a consolation that every time you see God speak, you take him seriously. Say, I believe in God. Say it again, I believe in God. Hallelujah. Today I want you to open up your spirit because I believe with all my heart that what I'm about to share with you will truly bless you. In the part two of this series, we are going to be considering the anointing. The glory revealed part two. We are looking at the anointing. That agency that can help men to reveal the possibilities in God. I said to you how that 
the glory of a man listen please is an unveiling of the possibilities that are in that man but there is a spiritual agency that empowers men to reveal this possibility the name given to it is the anointing acts chapter 1 verse 8 Please be very sensitive. A lot will happen tonight. A lot will happen tonight. This series is meant to truly bring an anointing to your life that you can hold on to it. You can run with it. And you can take every mountain that stands before you. Say amen. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let's read together. One to read. But ye shall receive what? Hold on. You shall receive the word power there is the word dunamis it's not the word exousia there are many words that are translated power and authority interchangeably two of them that are very important is exousia and dunamis exousia is erroneously translated power in many places in scripture but exousia is not power exousia is an authorization the capacity to stand in the office of someone and represent him is called exousia. But this is not exousia. This talks of force. The agency that compels compliance is called power. Dunamis. So it says you shall receive power after, read on, that the Holy Ghost is what? Come upon you. What will that power make you do? Read on. It says and ye shall be unto me where in jerusalem aha uh -huh. judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth so his idea is that you become witnesses who is a witness a witness is one who validates that the claim of another is true are we together if we are in the court for instance please pay attention i'm establishing a lot if we're in the court of law, right, and someone stole my phone, and while he was stealing it, promised, saw the person. Are we together? And now we're in the court of law. And I say, no, this guy, Sam, stole my phone. The judge will ask, do you have any witness? And then we will bring promise. Let's assume promise was snapping. And in the process of snapping, he snapped the man picking it. That is the evidence. A witness is only a witness because he has an evidence. Without an evidence, you cannot be a witness. Please listen. Without an evidence, you cannot be a witness. I can be, I mean, a Jimmy can be my brother, but in this case, he cannot be a witness. He can support me in prayer, but when we stand in court, he does not have evidence everybody say evidence i'm building a case here so promise comes before the judge and then he says are you a witness to this he says yes produce your evidence then he produces a photo and that photo shows the person stealing and based on that evidence the judge so the evidence is the power that has forced the phone to return back to me the anointing is the proof that you are a witness the anointing is the evidence. When you stand in this court of life, and life places a demand on you to prove that God is with you. When your family background brings before you a mountain to prove whether God is with you. When the limitation in Nigeria stands before you and says you are a Christian, prove that God is with you. He says you must receive power. The authorization. You cannot be a witness. So you are going around telling people Jesus saves. And they are saying what do you mean Jesus saves? Buddha also saves. So what is your evidence? And then the person levitates in the air. This is my evidence. Buddha empowered me. And they say what is your evidence? And then you say baba baba baba. And they say nonsense. That's not evidence. Are we together? When someone comes up on the scene and says, I am a free mason, 
I worship the flying dragon of Asia, the spirit called Mammon. And this is the evidence. I have built empires by her wisdom. What is your evidence? And then you say, I'm a Christian, I'm just going to heaven. What is your evidence? Please pay attention to tonight's service because life will ask you that question. I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself. I'm not one of those religious people. I took time to ask God questions before I started ministry because the world will ask me questions. You will stand before businessmen who are idol worshippers. The spirit will give them ideas and they will move forward. And you come ranting and speaking like a fool. You will stand before arrows that fly by day and noisome pestilences. What is your evidence? When there is a plague moving and it does not affect you, it's an evidence that there is another life in you. Please hear me. This is what I'm trying to teach you in this series. There must be an evidence. Let me tell you why we are talking too much in church. A believer was never designed to be a noise maker. We were designed to be proof producers. Our noise is a, is a cover up for insufficient evidence. Do you know you can be in a court and speak and the lawyer will say this evidence is not strong enough. There are few things the church is doing that unbelievers are not doing. Very few. Very few. I have studied a lot on world religions. I study a lot on religions and so many things. Christianity is not the fastest growing religion. I hope you are aware. I will tell you why. Because our strategy is wrong. They have proposed strategies that are not very effective. The religions that represent the fastest growing religions, you never see crusades. Are we together? You never see tracts. You never see people with talking, moving with Bibles all around. But there is a harvest per second, per second. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. He's working in me. God's ability. God's ability. He's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. Your hands on your head in one minute and pray and say lord there must be an evidence an evidence i'm tired of bringing mockery to your name and misrepresenting you go ahead and pray he shall receive power power not stories power not stories power Hallelujah, please sit down fire is burning in this place I tell you Acts chapter 10 verse 38 please help us media I came to challenge you the way we are doing church and Christianity we are about to disappoint God we need evidences not evidences just from preachers are we together I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself. I'm not one of those people they like, they say, just believe, don't worry in his time. No way. No way. No way. Before Gideon accepted the assignment, he asked questions. 
before Mary accepted, she, she said, how shall these things be? Because according to my knowledge, a man and a woman will produce pregnancy. But he said, the power of the highest. In other words, there is another root in the spirit. You have known that it's only a man and a woman. You have known that you only wait for five years to get a job, but there is another root. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. See, I bring you another way. There is not only one way of doing things. The world has created their way. But God has his way. How God anointed Jesus. Let me tell you what that means. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus. Of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who was anointed this way? Jesus. He was not anointed three days to the cross. He would have had 33 years of wasted experience and three days of impact. He was anointed before. How many of us have been taught to start moving without empowerment? He says, as a result of that, who went about doing what? Doing good. An example of the good he did was to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. That was not the only good he did. He multiplied bread, doing good by the anointing. He forced money inside the mouth of a fish, doing good by the anointing. He multiplied bread and fish by the anointing. He calmed the storm by the anointing. He vindicated a woman who was on her way to death by the anointing. He raised the dead by the anointing. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all that they, all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Divine presence bringing the anointing in the life of Jesus and Jesus moved around doing good. You are going around trying to do good. Willing to do good. Meaning to do good. But good is not coming because good is not just a desire. There is an empowerment. Men are empowered to do good. I want to help the poor. There is an anointing that helps you to do good. Write this down. What is the anointing? Please participate and listen patiently and carefully. Those outside in any of the overflows, just pay attention. You may be standing, but listen. Number one. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon a man, upon any man, not a preacher. God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. Every military man has a uniform. The uniform is a seal of authorization. When the military man is in mufti, he has no right to do certain things. But when he wears his uniform, his uniform and his badge is his seal of authorization. Are we together? Mm. Paul said, Paul, I, Paul, a man approved of God with miracles, signs and diverse manifestations. Approved of God. That is the evidence of my apostleship. Hallelujah. So number one, God's seal of authorization upon a man to represent him. Number two, the anointing is God's capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Write it down. Underline compel. Because we live in a stubborn world that will not change by desire. It takes power to change things. It takes power to change genotype from SS to AA. It takes power to change a cancerous cell to a healthy cell. It takes power to raise the dead. It takes power to prosper. Hallelujah. Are we together? takes power to prosper we all want to prosper 
but we neglect the place of power many people bow to gods bow to spirits receive power from them they sacrifice children turn them upside down and drain their blood and the man takes his pen upon that blood and goes to sign a proposal and end whenever you see it you must approve it that's power and yet many believers just move around and they ask you why should you get this proposal you say i'm sincere welcome to the world where only mantles speak your long story and english will not do you much when moses went to pharaoh he said pharaoh this is what the lord said pharaoh said nonsense he said my rod continue the conversation i don't have time for this rubbish janus and jembers brought their own rod when he swallowed it moses said take note of this i'm coming back and he left after nine plagues pharaoh was still hardened then the bible says yet one more plague will i bring upon pharaoh and the nation of israel he says afterwards he shall let you go and he didn't let them go the bible says they were driven to go out they didn't wait for their dough to rise to make chinchi. They were in a hurry. They made it anyhow because a man was tired. May your anointing weary darkness to let you go. I'm not motivating you. There is an unction a man can carry. No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. Give him two minutes. That madness will rearrange itself until it comes out because fire was not designed to fear the bible says he maketh his angels winds no more spirits and his ministers flames of fire there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. So break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Please look up. Someone came to me and said, Every night there's a spirit that comes to him and oppresses him. Just when things are about to happen, a stranger steps into his room and i said it's because that stranger has not seen power the bible says no man can enter a man's house and spoil him what will you first do discuss suggest bind the strong man he says and then you spoil his goods everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen I prophesy to you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen sing it one more time everything that was lost shall be returned unto you please sit down have you seen someone steal a laptop because he saw a room empty and you steal the laptop and run away with it are we together run away with the laptop because you are more powerful than the person then what does the owner do he goes to the police station and carries a policeman are we together they hold guns and they enter a van then they come and meet the owner after two weeks and say we are going to kill you power above his power what does he do he shows you the laptop is still lying down there quietly and he carries it the bible says, when you catch a thief if he gives you back what he has stolen he has still cheated you he will restore tenfold that profit must be added in the realm of the spirit when you catch a thief he doesn't pay back what he has stolen because time would have gone are we together if the breakthrough had come in 2005 by now you would have helped many people so now that it did not come you're not just going to receive it like that if you receive it you did it was not restoration it was just progress continued mm. 
the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. If Buhari announces right now and says tomorrow is public holiday, assuming tomorrow were a working day, immediately he speaks. All the armed forces and the military people and paramilitary, he is using authority, not power. What he's using is exousia, his office as a president to speak. But dunamis are the soldiers. So they move on the street with cane, guns, tear gas, and uh, black maria. What are they doing? Compelling compliance. If they find you roaming around, still trying to sell drugs in your pharmacy, they ask you, did you not hear what the president said? And then you, they hop you into the black maria and penalize you. God makes the statement, the earth is the Lord's. He's waiting for you to create that compliance. Are we together now? Mm. Number three, we're still defining the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing, write it down, is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. The empowerment. The capacity to manifest the possibilities in God. The anointing is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. It's not enough to chorus and say God is love. It's not enough to chorus and say God is mighty. Are we together now? Your life must produce the evidence. Number four, the last definition. What is the anointing? The anointing is the agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. The agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus. There are two things God is obsessed that they be revealed on the earth. Number one is his love. Number two is his sovereignty. His might as the sovereign ruler. That's where the word Lord comes from. There is a desire in God to see his love find expression in the earth. There is a desire in God to see his sovereignty find expression. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions to the anointing. Please just write this quickly. That's not really where we are dwelling. We preach many messages on the anointing. But just for us to know. There are two dimensions of the anointing. Broadly speaking. Number one. There is the personal anointing that empowers a man to grow and be like Jesus. There is a personal anointing that empowers a man to grow spiritually and be like Jesus. People like Kenneth E. Hagin call it the anointing within. The personal anointing that is for your spiritual growth to, to help you grow to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ it is the anointing that teaches you all things it is the unction from the Holy One that empowers you right the grace of God has appeared unto all men teaching us to say no there is the personal anointing to grow and represent Christ first John 2 20 media please first John 2 20 that's the first dimension of the anointing Every believer in Christ is entitled to that dimension of the anointing. Even that dimension itself can grow. Everyone is entitled. Read after me please. One to read. It says, but ye have an unction from the Holy One. And as a result, you know all things. You have an unction. Whether you are a preacher, whatever, you, if you are in Christ, you are entitled to this dimension of the anointing. Hallelujah. The second dimension of the anointing and trust me I know what I'm saying the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing given to you on account of a spiritual office 
or an assignment that is the anointing of your call the anointing of your destiny the anointing of your destiny is not the same as the anointing of your personal spiritual growth. It's the anointing that backs you up to make sure you fulfill purpose. The anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. Write this down. It is the anointing that reveals your destiny. It is the anointing that empowers you to fulfill your assignment on earth. That one comes with discovering your call. That one comes with discovering your place in life and destiny. It doesn't come just because you are born again. Are we together? If God calls you into ministry, there is an anointing that follows you. If God calls you into business, there is an anointing that follows you. The moment you assume that position of being an ambassador, you are ready to take one of the seven mountains that control humans. One of the seven mountains, the mountains of religion, the mountains of government, the mountains of, of, of arts and entertainment, the mountain of media, the mountain of education, the mountain of family, and the mountain of finance. Any one of those mountains God sends you, there is an anointing. Are we together? Because there are rulers of darkness. The Bible tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he says, but against what? Principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are rankings and all these spirits are strategically stationed on this mountain listen to my message give me this mountain there i teach on the spiritual dimension of success success is not just by degrees success is not just by intelligence success is not just by being scientific there is a spirituality because there are giants on every mountain but Caleb said give me this mountain hallelujah so there is an anointing that comes with your call there is an anointing that comes with your assignment when God empowers you he puts an anointing upon your life an anointing upon the ministry he has committed to you are we together there is an anointing upon Benny Hinn that produces that result. Now, let me tell you something about this second dimension of the anointing. Listen. This second dimension of the anointing is not operational anytime. I want you to understand this. Are we together? There is a timing and there are seasons of its operation. This anointing for your assignment is not operational anytime. There are three laws that govern its operation. One, a demand from those who desire to be recipients of it. It responds to faith. It responds to desire. Are we together? The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, how that when he was passing the gates, beautiful, the man was begging for arms. And Peter told him, look on us. And he looked at them, expecting to receive. And he says, silver and gold. That expectation provokes the anointing. Blind Bartimaeus cried, Thou son of David, he provoked the anointing. That is the anointing people like Kenneth E. Hagen would call the anointing upon. It doesn't come all the time. Anybody that tells you it comes all the time is a liar and doesn't understand anything about the anointing. If it's operational in you all the time, it will kill you. You do not have the physical capacity. Your body does not have that stamina. Have you finished preaching and you went back and felt tired? It lifted that's what Jesus meant by virtue has gone out of me. When virtue leaves you, prophets in ancient times, when the anointing landed upon them for their experience, when it lifted, some of them were sick for days. They had to eat herbs to recover from the strain. Are we together? This anointing is activated at the point of delivery at the point where you have to do that which you were born to do so you can be sleeping in your house the moment there is a demand and it is with respect to your assignment the anointing is like a lion within you 
Are we together? That's the reason why you can see a man of God. You may not even be able to touch him when he's on stage. After the meeting, you are hugging him, slapping him because something has lifted. But if by any mistake you're hugging, you apply faith to it, it will return. That's what makes people just, they are laughing and the next thing, the power of God because their hunger did not die with the service. Are we together? So many people were touching Jesus and a woman came. He said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Jesus was not even aware, but it was automatic. The moment there was a demand, that anointing, that messianic anointing that will fulfill Isaiah 61 to bind up the brokenhearted. The anointing that is given on account of your assignment. Two scriptures to help us. Isaiah 61. Please will not read it. Um, will not project it. Just write it. Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Upon me because he gave me an assignment that requires an authorization. So because of that, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And with that spirit came an anointing to preach glad tidings. To bind up the broken hearted. Right? To set the captives free, to open up the doors of prison, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all day that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The anointing came for that reason. Jesus reiterated it again in Luke chapter 4. When you read from verse 14 to 18, the Bible says they brought to him right that which was written by Isaiah the prophet and then he opened it and he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me and at the end of it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled i have come as a fulfillment of this then he began to do it in one of the synoptic gospels there and then he told a man with a withered hand stretch forth your hand as a proof that i have come What is the purpose of the anointing? I've said it to us, but we must. The purpose is, is encapsulated in the definition. But the purpose of the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Shabba kapara kusupa talabaya. Isaiah 10, 27. I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed. Why? Listen, please look up. There are yokes, there are burdens, there are afflictions upon the lives and the destinies of men upon the families of men robbing men of their dignity mocking God's statement that he made man like him and it takes the anointing to correct that error are we together the anointing comes to lift burdens the anointing comes to break yokes the anointing comes to open up prison doors to them that are bound. Number two, Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66 verse 3. Let's read it please. Just write it and look up and let's read. One, two, read. Say unto God, uh huh. Read on through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar, not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power, listen, let me tell you something you are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here unfortunately it is not given to you to choose to arrive here are we together the moment you are born there are children who from birth they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses are we together they never chose it 
is the reality listen let me tell you the moment you cross the second heavens the domain of evil can find expression the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord the Bible says but from the second heavens demonic activities are authorized to find expression down till under the earth that's what happens to children the moment it's not a man and a woman that produces children they just create the body for the child to come but the moment that child arrives right from the interface of the second heavens war begins over the destiny of the child it's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child or careless enough to allow anything happen are we together yeah that is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb how can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there are we together is it not in your bible that john was filled with the holy ghost from the womb how did he pray in tongues how did he manifest that hallelujah I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing this this is the place where I want us to be sensitive now because you are not only going to hear you are going to receive Amen. hallelujah please believe me you are not going to hear alone you are going to receive Amen. I enter the holy of holy I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Holy Spirit. I wait on you for fire. Kaba kaba ya for fire. For fire. Lord, we wait on you. can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me I was not born with it are we together a time can come and tonight can be that time if you believe but if you are careless Elijah said if you can see me was he blind it's a spiritual language there is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing it's not about falling down look at me it's not about falling down it's about your spirit station you are not just hearing you are seeing what the Lord is saying let me tell you something the difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing 
there is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing I know it you reign you ancient Zion king Kadosh Kadosh you were mighty on your throne just follow me follow me you reign you ancient Zion king Kadosh Kadosh you were mighty on your throne Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we God us. You were mighty on the throne. Yeah, yeah, you're mighty in this place. Shalom, shalom, my father, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Jehovah, Baba Shakatabayada. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Yeah. sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction Jesus himself what can make a man of God so powerful that your words can create an effect in the life of men you are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf what is the key please hear me this is an office I'm not speaking to you as a man I can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth but I speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing. I may not show you, I may not boast that I know business principles. I may not boast that I know on leadership, but I can teach you the mysteries of the presence of God. For it is an office. It was given to me by Jesus Christ. The angels bow before him. The beautiful, beautiful. The heavens are not the door. The angels bow before him. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Just follow me tonight. Heaven and earth the door. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. The heavens and I are going.
Rabaka Paradozo Badi Balakataba. Understand what I'm teaching you tonight, and you will walk in a new dimension. Believe me. Understand what I'm teaching you tonight, and your ministry will change like day and night. Understand what I'm teaching you tonight, and you will become like a God upon the earth. Understand what I'm teaching you tonight, and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit. Understand what I'm teaching you tonight, and your life will become a wonder. It's not by quoting scripture. It's a realm you can stand in. Number one, the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation. Don't trivialize it. Write it and take it as serious as anything. There are many people in church who are not born again, but they want power. There are many pastors on the altar who are not born again, but they want power. You can fast as an unbeliever. You will never find power. You can be the PA of a man of God and not be born again. Please hear me. That they ordained you does not mean you are born again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah, I tell you, I sense fire in this place. That you were ordained. They poured oil on you. Does not mean that you are born again. Let me tell you. We can do what we know to do on earth. But it depends on whether God approves of it or not. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what? power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to god is not salvation let me tell you the truth there are so many people who need to examine their born again i am telling you this there are many people who are not born again are we together and i don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with jesus christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type God will back God does not back everybody just because Jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen. You know, it's, and, and please, if you're a pastor here, hear me. Aside from the impartation you receive tonight, open your eyes. Don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic. Oh, the power of God is here. All these things we keep doing, we fool ourselves. Nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter. Not suit, not English, not Greek and Hebrew. There must be a track record in the secret place. He said that which i tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountain top you don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic you expect things to happen no sir human beings are not robots are we together human beings are not idiots do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat i don't mean physically alone 
salvation number two the second key give us first corinthians 2 verse 9 the second key pay attention to a rich heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for god and his kingdom addiction passion i'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required you search much deeper within to the way things are you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. There is no power for part time Christianity, there is no power for part time addiction, there is no power for part time ministry. So many pastors are part-time ministers. By part-time, I don't mean that you are doing another thing. Part-time with God and part-time with ambition. Looking for relevance. Joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry. No, it is God that lifts men. Please hear me. Your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and Boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven it must match your level of addiction you will never have more power beyond your addiction no your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you to his kingdom? To seeing his kingdom come? Don't say I'm addicted. It shows in your giving. It shows in your time. It shows in your service in the house of God. Don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house. You are not addicted. No. It says, as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. It was the psalmist that said this. He says, oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? to see your power and your glory let me tell you something many Christians in our generation we love God we are born again but we are too ashamed of our addiction addiction the same way have you seen someone addicted to uh, what they call this thing Indian hemp the person will not mind coming to meet a small child and say sir please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten he's lying so obviously but because he cannot help it if you can still manage your passion for god you don't love him enough oh let's let's be real let's let's not act like fools you are joking you want power i'm telling you you must fall in love with god with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us uh, I, you know, I pray for people and most times when people come that I pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever, I know they don't love God. They even love me more than God. I see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man. You know that they love me more than God. You know they love that anointing more than God. Anything above God, even if he gave you, is an idol whatever it is please hear me do you love god more than your beauty do you love god more than power do you love god more than koinonia do you love god more than joshua selman 
that's addiction do you love god more than marriage do you love god more than more than whatever it's all these carnal things that take our time please fall in love with god in a way that nothing in time people get jobs when they lose jobs they backslide what a shame to your passion for god you are in a relationship someone says i will marry you all of a sudden he says i'm not doing and you leave god god i'm angry Aye. jesus told the disciples he said will you also go and they said to whom shall we go where, where are we going leaving you is no longer an option if you never bless me i still i mean i still owe you my love forever please let me tell you something if you want power from god stop seeking god just because of things stop seeking god just because of things oh lord i want your time i want your hand and we bend god's hand with fasting and prayer no how many pastors want to see god glorified in their assemblies very little i can tell you this many pastors fast some of you are like that probably you came from somewhere you are sitting boiling waiting for the time of impartation and god is saying calm down not so so that you will not go back disappointed god is not a herbalist there is a protocol to true spiritual power addiction addiction outspoken christianity outspoken christianity not the type you off your ringtone because you are in a place that 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 will fall your hand if god falls your hand you are falling i tell you i rather be a doorkeeper the psalmist said i will trade my palace and its honor to serve god forever you will be forever you will be the lamb upon the throne the lamb upon the throne and i gladly bow my To worship you alone. MOG. It's time to seek God more than ministry. Your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God. You have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons. And you, you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule. I can cancel any ministration for my secret place. You know, we think being busy is ministry. Oh, today I'm in Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm in Dubai. Next tomorrow I'm in South Africa. Next tomorrow I'm in UK. Then I'm in Accra Ibom. I'm in London. And we think because we are hopping up and down, we are doing ministry. Let me tell you, you may be doing all these things, but before God, you are not doing anything. Your heart is more important than your voice to God. Don't think because you are always talking it means God is hearing you. No. Your heart. Number three, let's hurry up. I want us to pray. What is the third key? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. The third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Slash prayers. So you write it slash prayers. That the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, backed up by the ability to pray in tongues, fluent tongues. Now, there's no time for me to go into this discussion. Please don't stop, Mike. Don't stop. You see. This concept of prayer and the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been hijacked by Satan. Please listen to me. It is not a denominational perspective. It has nothing to do with Pentecostalism and charismatism. I was never filled with the Holy Ghost in any church. There is no pastor, no denomination that can claim that it was because I was in the assembly. No. 
God did that for me specifically so that I will be able to communicate these truths to people the devil has cheated us and I know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism I understand and I respect your passion but listen to me if you want power in this kingdom that endowment with power that endowment with power ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says now when the day of Pentecost were fully come he said they were gathered together in one accord verse 2 says suddenly suddenly not gradually the baptism does not happen gradually suddenly are we together suddenly they had a sound that sound as of a mighty rushing wind and the Bible says it came and filled the room and then the Bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it rested on each each one of them not some they're not as shared each one of them then the Bible says then they began to speak with tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance they were 120 in the upper room it was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing. And they said, these men were drunk with new wine. They linked that experience with wine. The same way a man drinks beer, one bottle, two bottles, ten bottles. At the eleventh one, is not himself again. Another influence takes him. So when they saw the men, he said, you are behaving like those who have taken this thing. Are we together now? And then in Acts chapter 3, still, well, Acts chapter 2, when Peter finished preaching to them, the Bible says they were caught to the heart. And this is what they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then he says, repent for the remission of your sins. And then he says, you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the Lord will call that included us are we together yeah in Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Paul having passed through the upper coast the Bible says he came and he found certain disciples disciples they were already born again give us Acts please 19 1 to 4 they had passed through the upper coast the Bible says Paul came and found certain disciples are we together and then he asked them a question verse 2 he says have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe meaning it's not the same experience has been born again initiated by the same spirit but there are two separate experiences have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed and then they replied him they said we have not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost and Paul was surprised and then he says unto what then were you baptized he was asking them a question and they said the baptism of John then Paul began to explain to them he said the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who was to come that means it was Jesus Christ and afterwards Paul said the, the Bible says they were now baptized to the name of Jesus Christ and then Paul laid his hands upon them and then the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues right they were 12 in number have you received the Holy Ghost have you received that empowerment since you believed when you read let's read from 18 18 the last five verses if you can give it to us right the Bible talks about a very intelligent man hallelujah um no not 19 verse 18 18 Acts 18 Acts 18 please the last four verses Acts 18 are you with us acts 18 okay let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time okay 
Now the Bible says, give us from verse 24. Let's start from 24. Listen to this story. A certain Jew named who? Apollos. And the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. It's where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance. Like many people in churches, like many pastors, they are zealous, they love God, but the scope of their understanding of God is the baptism of John. Let's see what happened. One day, he went to a crusade to impress everybody as usual. He says, and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue. There were men who were powerful people of the spirit called Aquila and Priscilla they said when they had him and they they took him with them they said we see zeal in you but you are limited there is a theology that has not been taught to you we want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God the Bible says they took him hear me and then they says they expounded to him the way of God more what perfectly Let's see what he did as a result. Next verse. And when he was disposed and passed to Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. The Bible says, who when he was come, he helped them much which believed through grace. Let's see what he did. Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Now he had an evidence. He didn't just speak to them. In the former verses, he was eloquent sorry but now he could convince them that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ this was not just just again there was an evidence there was an empowerment listen you must be tired of explanations oh God is this God is that one miracle can answer a thousand questions there is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again. The internet is full of messages. There are all kinds of men of God with perspectives. All across Africa, all across the world, messages are now free. What the world needs is a demonstration of power. Romans chapter 8, please. Verse 19. Romans chapter 8 For the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation not the explanation not the discussion Let's see it in the New Living Translation or the Message Bible I'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are There is a version like that 8 verse 19 not 20, 8 verse 19. 8 verse 19. Uh, thank you. NLT. For creation is what? Eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Because the Bible says it does not yet appear. They are still looking at us and they think we are like them. But there is an activity happening in us. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Are we together? The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be like. We are still in the formation. There is still a building. Christ is still being formed in us. Like Paul prayed to the church. He said, My little children of whom I travel until Christ be formed. For when he's done, 
let me tell you he will produce a wonder in our lives first corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray first corinthians 2 verse 7 he says talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit he said no please give it to us um okay no problem no problem let's just sneak it in it says no the wisdom we speak shakabaka tabarataba it doesn't make sense but the bible calls it the hidden wisdom god put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it if you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom the bible says we speak the wisdom we speak of is what the mystery everybody say mystery the same way there is a traditional festival and you see people going around fire and making enchantments and putting fire on their body have you seen that happen and it doesn't burn them they put the fire in their mouth and bring it out they carry knife and put it in their mouth and it enters and brings it out because they are operating on a mystery the bible says to the believer there is a mystery that has been given you It says the mystery of God his plan that was he previously hidden what was it he said even though he made it for our ultimate glory so one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues when a man locks up himself and begins to pray people say you are just talking nonsense no problem it's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter. <laughs> and nobody laughs at you. It's intelligent. In fact, people accuse you for not laughing. Who taught you how to laugh? The same way your cry, as sarcastic as it looks, it compels compassion. Tongues is also like that. Don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues. When you slap a baby, Shade, when you gave birth to your child, and they slapped the child and the child started crying who taught the child that they cry with the mouth not the eyes it was programmed there listen i want you to know that the believer is supernatural when you remove the supernatural we are just herbalists leaders or and followers of a religion don't remove the supernatural dimension hallelujah made for our glory any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of God. There is a relationship between prayer and power. Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4, they receive tongues. Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues. He said you receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. Meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man. It was Paul himself that said, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than ye all. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1. He spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17. Pray without season. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. You'll be an irresponsible person. It means pray consistently. The Bible says, and the fire upon the altar, it shall never go down day or night. Let me tell you something. Whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life. It's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life. It's cheaper, as bad as it is, for your health to be attacked than your prayer life. And let me tell you how Satan attacks you. He makes you to resent everybody that can help you. You fight and quarrel them and push them. When you are alone, then he attacks you. Satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness, through anger, through fault finding. So everybody that can help you and intercede for you, he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone. Solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you. Listen, listen. Excessive solitude. I'm not talking of just retreating to pray. When there is a desire in you to not hear people, to not listen, you are in a world of your own. It's a sign that darkness is close to you. It's a strategy for your destruction. 
the last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation the mystery of impartation transference of grace transference of unction transference of power Numbers chapter 27 we'll just look at one example so that we pray let's see what transpired between Moses and Joshua a classic sign of biblical impartation Numbers 27 verse 18 to 23 Numbers chapter 27 please write this scripture down and study it with all your heart this was God instructing Moses to prepare Joshua for ministry are we together are you ready let's read one to read and the Lord said unto Moses take thee Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom is the spirit and do what lay your hands upon him that what should happen next verse and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight are we together and he says and thou shalt put some of thine honor Hi. can you show me where honor is in a man God said don't just through impartation transfer your spirit transfer your honor I told you honor is not something you fight for it's a mantle that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient there is a mantle that makes men loyal to a grace it's not by shouting and saying obey me there is a mantle and he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall speak counsel for him and so on and so forth and so on and so forth now let's see what happened Deuteronomy chapter 3 chapter 34 verse 9 just one scripture Deuteronomy 34 is still a continuation of this story Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 let's read together one two read uh -huh. was full of the spirit of wisdom why for Moses had what laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him listen you know why people don't listen to you because you are trying to do ministry using seniority you are trying to do ministry saying don't disrespect me there is an unction that compels loyalty men are not loyal to a man just because he can preach they will clap for you when you see a ministry that can follow a man unto death brothers and sisters there is a mystery upon his head I can tell you Koinonia has that mystery hmm. you see ba, there are secrets in this kingdom there are secrets in this kingdom the one you can find is the one you will live by the one you do not know is the one that will chain you forever God said, I want to honor Joshua, but I will not ignore a vessel who is already carrying it. He said, Moses, it is within your power to put your spirit and your honor upon him. Listen, you can carry a man's grace and the virtue of God upon his life and reap. You can trace an anointing and know where it came from. Are we together? You can see a man stand on stage and know that this came from Benny Hinn. This one. You can see this prayer fire and know this one came from Duncan Williams. This one did not just come from this. You can see a prosperity mantle and trace it. Anointings are like address. They can show you where they came from. I'm a product of many anointings. The glory revealed through the anointing the anointing giving you capacity to produce an evidence an evidence 
and evidence there are different kinds of anointings there is the power to prosper shout it say the power to prosper I want you to shout it like you mean it say the power to prosper this is what many people need to pray for I'm not against business ideas I teach you principles there's financial dominion but I can tell you there is such a thing as the power to prosper if you don't have it I've seen people who have all kinds of business ideas but the power to prosper is not a business idea the power to prosper is a grace that compels creation to respond to you in a certain way Jesus had it he said go and you will see a donkey a colt no man had written on it bring it the owner could not say no what kind of grace is that that's the grace that will make you tell somebody we need speakers for our program and he said take it that's the grace that will make somebody say take my car and be using it for this crusade there is such a grace let me tell you something how you will know the power to prosper is not in your life is that you pay for everything if you pay for everything the power to prosper is not it's not about being a millionaire the power to prosper is not about being a millionaire it's about the supernatural speaking in your life men are rising to help you when there is trouble listen if you are in trouble and there is no man who can arise to help you I'm telling you the power to prosper is not the power for finances we have reduced it to money every time preachers preach they, they mean the power to give you dollars please don't insult God money was an idea by the time that scripture was written there was no naira there was no dollar it's the power that moves you forward even if it must raise help us from anywhere I want you to believe this by the grace of God this is how this ministry came the power to prosper listen please I don't know how I don't want you to think money money is part of it if you think money you will be you will think I am saying the power to get money to buy watch and suit that's nonsense that's not what I'm talking about to prosper means to do well to prosper means by all means you will excel are we together the pros the power to prosper is the power that moves men to support your interest at the expense of their own interest when you see a man a man who can leave his own assignment and pursue another man's assignment there is power to prosper there that's what God wanted to give us but pastors have told us the power to prosper is the power to buy a nice shoe and you sit down and pray for hours you don't need to be born again to buy a nice shoe you just need to offer value and it will come this is this is not about getting money for shoe the power that causes men to move you forward you can have money but do you have helpers you can have money but do you have endorsers you can have money but do you have men that can lift your hand this is the power to prosper say I need the power to prosper the key to suffering in a Christian's life is to ignore the power to prosper believe me you may get a job very soon you will find out that money does not do everything money is not everything money is very important don't get me wrong but money is not everything there are people today who are in houses that they are not paying the rent that's the power to prosper you can have 500,000 to rent a duplex you can have 2.5 million to rent a duplex that's not necessarily the power to prosper that's good financial acumen good financial intelligence and that's commendable but the power to prosper is that you can leave your house with nothing and return back with miracles because there are men stationed anywhere whether you forget your money or not it doesn't make any difference because there is an unction that sends helpers as at when due that's the power to prosper and if our God is for us then who can never stop us and if our God is for us then what can stop us help me
prosper is the ministry of men in your life the ministry of men in your life help us everywhere please listen it's not just intelligence to produce result by yourself this body is limited there is too much you can do there is only so much you can do with this body are we together yes see let me tell you something if the only job of the power to prosper is to give you money then Bill Gates can mock the church are we together you know we think all there is to the power to prosper is money I don't insult any man of God we have preached this thing but I'm saying we have limited the power to prosper to money so those who don't like money just say no 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 I don't like it to reject the power to prosper is like to cut two of your legs in the spirit how else will you move are we together the Bible says David was in the cave of Adullam by himself all of a sudden 400 men that's the power to prosper they came to him in the cave and they said be a leader of the, over us we will hear you and we will walk with you in ancient times you were not rich if you just had money they can come and beat you and kill you and remove your head and carry the gold you were rich if you had people people it was a battle of territory and loyalty but in our generation now you can be a, a greedy person that just looted from the national treasury and carry money and buy suits and come and deceive us we know what the power to prosper is there are people who are rich but they do not have it that's why they don't give God the glory when you suffer for everything you can't give God the glory are we together you suffer to get a job you suffer to keep it you suffer to buy a car you suffer to change another one you suffer to get your wife pregnant suffering all around how can you give God the glory but when you sit down and watch God God will say son I want to embarrass you stand still you have done something that has touched me stand still hallelujah one time we're coming back from Ekiti and when we're coming back from Ekiti I don't share too much of these testimonies but someone just did a heavy transfer into the ministry's account honestly I don't even know the person I had to ask the protocol people do you know this person help us everywhere not just cash not just kind someone will come and meet you and say there is a property somewhere I could not sleep the Lord said I should bless you power to prosper someone says from today until December I will fuel the generator of koinonia don't even tell apostle that's the power to prosper they make your journey easy by making you lighter you can have the money but you will sleep because of it let me tell you one of the graces I trust God to release tonight is the power to prosper I'm explaining it to you so that you will believe if it's not in your life you are going to cry this night because some of us it, once you are stranded you are dead there no helper you call and everybody ends your call it's not about hustling it's about Ebenezer the helper of Zion are we together If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, I don't know how else to explain it to you. Are we together? There are so many people in Koinonia here preparing for marriage. The economy of Nigeria has become so fierce. If you don't have the power to prosper, you will suffer. You can get a job after laboring for years in the university. You get a job and someone just says, where are you from? And you say, I'm Yoruba. He says, you are not Hausa. Leave the job. It just brings in sentiments to cancel your five, six, seven years of labor. That's the world we live in now. Are we together? Are you my brother? Are you a Christian or otherwise? Are you this? Are you from the same village? Not what do you have to give? In that world of wickedness, you want to move forward? 
you want to plant a church i was not born in zaria i'm not from kaduna state you don't go to another man's state and do ministry if you don't have the power to prosper there is loyalty that comes with territory are we together that's why jesus told the people start from jerusalem but when you go to a foreign territory brothers and sisters you need the power to prosper that's what our fathers have used and they have opened branches of their ministries in uk in france huh someone speaks yoruba and another person interprets in french and the people never leave there is a pastor writing things in france and people would rather stay there and redeemed mfm is there moving as if the devil does not exist you will find places where i was i was dedicating a woman's child um, she used to be in Zaria, but now she's in France. She was in Holland. God used us, you know, and then there was a miracle for her. After many years, she had a child. And she went to different churches. The Presbyterian churches there were not dedicating children. They didn't collect tithes, and they were not dedicating children because the government was sanctioning. And I told her, I said, uh -uh, you mean there's no church around? And she said, the only living church in this area is redeemed. I said, redeemed again. Redeemed again. How did you get there now and the pastor there is a yoruba person come on now power to prosper you enter a land and become indomitable a firm grasp of territories not intimidated by any government they will come and go the mystery keeps you there now they are downsizing workers between now and december a lot will happen i've told us i told us at first of january this thing will not go well in terms of the economy i'm not a prophet of doom but i told us there is a mystery of exemption that's why god said this are year of multiplied grace and influence isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3 it says gentiles shall come hallelujah if you are looking for a better nigeria this year i tell you the truth under god you are joking i love nigeria are we together i'm a very loyal citizen of this nation but this is prophecy it's an unfolding of events some things will happen the only thing is that there is an exemption the power to prosper please you, you we, when it's time to pray you will cry it in your life that's what makes you different from unbelievers are we together that's the only condition where you can look at your life and give god glory you say no i know the school fees of my children before i will go to pay it someone has paid it and he will never tell you who he is write it again if you did not write it the ultimate proof that the anointing to prosper is upon your life is the ministry of men the ministry of helpers not just business ideas it takes men to make things happen have you not seen people with ideas and they died with their ideas someone called pastor tunde bakare and told him he said i love you and i've invested 200 million in an investment for you it's just growing whenever you need it they can talk to you and he said what for he said i'm okay and the man said no i had to do it you are my pastor Hi. when a man argues with you about blessing you There is such a thing and we are going to pray there are many other anointings the power listen the power to heal the sick there are three i'm going to teach us ah, there's no time let me just go straight to the three that the lord told me that's number one the power to prosper number two are you ready it's called resurrection power don't claim you know what it is just listen to me resurrection power is about the apex the zenith of a man's manifestation of the anointing what is resurrection the ability to make dead things come back to life is the hallmark of creation are we together let me tell you something there is resurrection power the bible says ephesians please help us ephesians 1 verse 17 we are reading down to 20 for this call paul says for this cause i paul i bow my knees right to the father of glory 
that he may give unto you listen the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light he said that he may what know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints here it comes verse 19 read it if you're a christian one to go and what is the exceeding greatness of his what power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power what mighty power next verse which he wrought in christ when he what raised him the power that can raise a thing that has died is power indeed the power that can heal what is alive is power but the power that can raise what is dead come on you carry that anointing and enter a lifeless environment and something gives life isaiah 32 verse 15 we are praying this one scripture and then we we'll stand up and pray let me show you that there is an ability that can bring life to dead things it is called resurrection power brothers and sisters get this anointing and your life will change no matter what it is it's a matter of time and influence upon you read it 32 want to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then what happens and the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine uh -huh. and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's the power of resurrection you step into a desert place spirit have your way in us today spirit take your throne as we are changed chapter 37 there is an anointing that can restore I tell you I feel the anointing of the spirit Ezekiel 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me in the spirit listen and set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of what? bones no structure This power of restoration together with the power of resurrection and the power to prosper will make you indomitable believe me verse 2 verse 2 and cause me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many bones and they were what very dry listen you will step into the life of people with age-long issues the devil has stolen from them it's not just that the situation is dead it was stolen then son of man verse 3 he says can these bones live and he says only thou no west verse 4 this is one key to releasing the anointing and he said unto me prophesy speak Hagar speak command Hagar instruct compel let it be upon these bones and say unto them 
Oh ye dry bones. Who speaks to bones? Who speaks to bones? Dogs eat bones. Men throw bones. God speaks to bones. It says, Hear ye the word of the Lord. And then let's read verse 5. And behold, I will cause bread to enter you. Go to verse 7. So I prophesied, not as I wanted, as I was commanded. And there was what? A noise. The same noise in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. There was a sound. And behold, a shaking. And the Bible says, and behold, bones came together. This is not just resurrection. This is restoration. Are we together? We are going to pray. Hold hands together. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to blast in tongues like an angry man who is tapping into power. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a man, like a woman who is about to take delivery of unction to function praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to look in one minute at your life. See the barriers that have stood before you because they are about to be smashed into pieces. Something is about to come upon your life that will move you forward. Something is about to come upon your life that will drive you to the next level. Something is about to come upon your life. The power to run. The power to run. The power to run. The power to fly. The power to run. Please lift your hands.
listen it is not about falling down don't be distracted with falling down open your spirit and receive something that will change your life don't just focus on falling down the Holy Ghost is doing his thing but beyond falling down open up your heart to receive children adults don't say no some people cannot receive you have a child stand for them don't say they cannot receive hallelujah Paul said for I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established lift your hands I want to pray for you the glory of God is revealed in a man when there is an anointing right now in the name that is above all names I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic office and I declare that at the count of three by the ministry of angels by the unction by the ministry and the mystery that surrounds this office right now at the count of three I declare that this unction fall inside and outside online and everywhere one two three take it take it take it right now receive it power receive it fire shaka baba katala baba inside the overflows right now right now right now every row every row every column every row the thousands following online i release it upon you you that are listening in your home you that are listening in your room the power of the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost in your life in your ministry in your business the power of the holy ghost the power take it now lift your hand There is an anointing called the power to prosper. Lift your hands and receive it. I pray for you now. Shaka Paratai. I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in this ministry. The ministry of man making your life easy. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive the power to prosper. Take the power to prosper. Take the power to prosper in your ministry. Take the power to prosper in your job. The power to prosper in your academics. The power to prosper in your business. The power to prosper. By this anointing every struggle in your life where you labor by yourself for result it comes to an end this night it comes to an end this night number two the power that can quicken things if that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will revitalize ay, 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 ay. will revitalize hallelujah the Lord is giving me a sign for many of you to be your right hand I don't know what I'm saying but your right hand in a supernatural way 
your right hand I see the right hand of many people shaking this is what the Lord is showing me right now that anointing for resurrection all over this auditorium take it now take it now take it now take it now every dead thing come alive come alive Talita Kumi come alive Talita Kumi dead academics dead relationships There are men today who have covenants with God. Answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith. Their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery through honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing God. When, when Saul came where Samuel was, just that atmosphere implicated him. He prophesied. All kinds of things happened to him. You need to understand that territories, human beings represent systems in the kingdom. And not there are certain audacious statements that when God makes, he's not just waiting for your personal faith. He creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant. Are we together now? God entered a covenant with Abraham. Is that true? And then Abraham slept with Hagar and then had Ishmael. Is that true? They were at the wilderness crying. Two of them were crying. God only had the cry of Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was Abraham as far as the covenant was concerned. So God could not listen to Hagar, but he had the voice of the Lord crying. And because of that, he came. Let me tell you, this ministry you see like cobwebs, is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants mysteries and covenants agreements with God that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen I want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight you are not alone there is grace for you rise up on your feet you are mighty in this place You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Say na 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 na. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Faithful God. Hallelujah. minute before we begin to minister I want you to lift your voice and tell God everything you desire for him to do don't keep quiet don't say God knows open your mouth Lord, open to 
my finances lord step into my business lord step into my family faithful god hallelujah Se que para da bato sobra de la lapa Lord take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening Take away the barrier oh God stopping my influence enlarge my coast papa tayaba Se que tele catara ba 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 prayers Lord I must take my testimony tonight I'm tired of this fibroid it dies this night this night it must go this night not tomorrow Lord favor must land upon my life I'm tired of struggling Favor must come upon my life. Sikepoko soto bakata. Those online, make sure you are praying. The anointing of the Spirit will reach you where you are. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign. hallelujah hallelujah the lord is starting tonight with an impartation don't bring them out i am seeing the lord speaking to me and he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies and it's coming on 21 people 
21 people i stretch my hands right now i stretch my hands right now receive that impartation 21 people divine strategies the wisdom of god receive it that idea kato sotoya divine idea someone has been praying lord show me the way here it comes the anointing brings it help them please the anointing brings it upon your life 21 people the lord shows me 21 people an impartation supernatural strategies Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen. The Lord is speaking to me. And this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Listen. Two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit. And I'm seeing a map. Get ready please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria. And I'm landing in Kaduna state. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now. By the spirit of God. Kaduna state. Kaduna state. I see an anointing. Only Kaduna state. Shabaratakata. Embreketeta. Kaduna state. A miracle happening for Kaduna people. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State. Now, an anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shaka Toda Parata. Reketekete, help them please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to go in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? Yeah, like a red dress or something like that. Stephanie, who is that? Stephanie. There is a Stephanie I'm seeing. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone and in the vision the Lord is showing me it's like a red dress, but I'll pray for you. Lift your hands. The Lord says I should tell you witchcraft ends in your family. Witchcraft ends in your family. You will hear testimonies that will surprise you. Right now I stretch my hands towards you. Now, it ends by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Johanna. 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 I'm hearing a name, Johanna. Please save our time. Johanna. I don't know who that person is. Johanna. I won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast. Johanna. 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 
whether you're here inside or outside Johanna 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 there is a lady following us from Lagos your name is blessing your name is blessing you are in a room you are following from a laptop the Lord is saying I should tell you he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family hallelujah now lift your hands I want to pray I tell you I feel fire in this place it's time to command deliverance it's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives forces of darkness the Lord is bringing deliverance to your family your family the Lord is bringing deliverance I'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family and the Lord is bringing deliverance right now right now to the family right now to the family the Lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family a major deliverance to the family hallelujah listen listen as I begin to pray for you all those devils that has tied the lives of people it doesn't mean you are possessed it's not an insult you may not even know you may be minding yourself just like you're standing now I'm going to command those devils they must go they are not only going to live your life they must live your family are we together listen some of you brought many prayer lists just one spirit living will produce all that testimony believe me believe me lift your hands my heart my soul I give to you I bow to you my Savior and King lift your hands thank you Jesus father thank you for your anointing to deliver to set free there are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ they must go I want you to bring them out now they must go they must go now at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus you'll be surprised to see what happens Kai 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 I see spirits of delay 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 spirits that have held men down all kinds of spirits father in the name of Jesus at the count of three Lord as your people shout may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough 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 flowing sound my flowing sound in the name of Jesus one two three shout Jesus now I command those demons go now go now go now Kato Sotoba lift your voice and begin to command every spirit every devil help them please go now I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people you must go now inside and outside I command you inside and outside bring them out I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost lift your voice I command you you must go now now by the anointing of the Spirit their destinies release their destinies release their breakthrough lift your hands we are still praying I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them and the Lord is saying to unlock those chains unlock those chains that anointing will come on certain people right now father i decree and declare in the name of jesus wherever they are any place in your life that has been chained and tied right now in jesus name i command those gates be open be open be open be open be open by the anointing of the holy ghost chains chains be broken Ushers, please. Chains, be broken. 
in the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Be broken. Kalapatoshaya. Release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. We have to be very fast. Because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow, the roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Something is going to happen here now. Ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed, listen, is going to come on some people. Physically, they will find themselves trying to run, help them. So that it's not like they won't be able to control themselves. It's a prophetic act by the spirit. So that they don't enjoy anybody. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Guys, be sensitive, please. In the name, Help them, please. It's already happening. That's the instruction God is giving me. An anointing will come on you physically. You will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough. Right now, Lord, I release that anointing. Give men speed. Give men speed. Give men speed. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Give men speed. Run like Elijah. Help them. Run like Elijah. Help her. Help her. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Grace for speed. I release it. I release it. From my spirit. I release it. Grace for speed. No more stagnation. No more retrogression. Run with the grace of Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahaz. Hallelujah. Charity. Charity. Are you married? The Lord wants to give you two miracles. Huh? Number one, God wants to settle you maritally. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Second, what are you doing? I just finished school. I'm a graduate now. Huh? I'm a graduate now. You are a graduate? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Abuja. Huh? Yes, sir. Abuja? Yes. What is Abuja? I have a fiancé. You have somebody there. Yes. Sir. That's the person to marry you. Okay, Did you sir. tell me? No, sir. Did you tell me? No. That's what I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. I said God will settle you Amen. maritally. Amen. Huh? And then God will give you a job. Amen. Supernatural job. Amen. Because it's your desire. Amen. God will give you a job. Amen. The Lord is saying I should prophesy to you. I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past. Uh -uh, your future has to change. It, the, what the past is, is not a good testimony. And the Lord is saying, I'm giving you a new chapter. A new chapter. Come, my dear, in the name of Jesus. God is giving you a job. May he connect you maritally. Huh? Is your name Charity? Is your name Charity? In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I pray for you. Delay ends now. Delay ends now. I pray for your auntie. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to one more case before I pray. I want to pray specifically for barren people. I'm going to pray that before we we'll do a lot of other things. Before we call the sick out. Thank God there are many hands today. And so we're able to do a very quick walk. Ladies, when I count three, just shout, I receive. Don't worry. Follow me and do my stupid thing. Are you ready now? One, two, three. There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door of breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom Shalom You're mighty in this place Shalom Shalom Jehovah Shalom Shalom You're welcome in this place I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit. Doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. Hmm. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen. There is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online you can follow. I want to pray. God, I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy. And I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace. Strange establishment. Doors opening. Doors opening. In their own accord. Help them. Doors opening. I put you in a platform spiritually. Where you experience speed and establishment. In the name of Jesus, help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. My God. Be established. Be established. Be established. Be established. I lose your hands. I untie your hands. Every brother here, I untie your hands. Be established by the Spirit. Be established by the Spirit. Go and buy that land. By the Spirit, go and build that house. By the Spirit, I open strange doors. Don't say you are too young. It's an anointing. It's not your effort. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now leave those who are standing here very quickly. If you are here specifically, please listen. You are here specifically trusting God to stamp 
the feet of Satan in your family over the issue of children. You know, God announced beginning of October that the theme for this miracle service, you've had the testimonies. Please don't say they have prayed for me before. Don't allow that unbelief destroy you. Are we together? While you are coming, there is a lady who will shout under the anointing. It is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness. It's a loud shout. It will be loud enough for everyone to hear. By the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. That's the shout there. That's the shout by the Spirit. There is an anointing to pray for the barren. Come, please. All those, whether man, woman, if you are married. Look, don't come out here if you are not married. Why are they here? Why are they all here? You must be married. Except if you are standing in for someone. Don't stand here doubting. There is an anointing. I see a river. Some of you as you are standing right now, the power of God will come on you. Just before I even start praying. Yeah. Look at this. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the doors. Lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? for you by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low spam count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that we'll pray for the sick generally we have a lot to do don't lose touch of this don't come for koinonia and then sit down this is not a museum let your heart be connected because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit i'm going to be very fast i'm seeing listen i'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child no matter what the spirit is no matter what the issue is fibroid infertility low sperm count whatever i don't care what the name is it must live right now in the name of jesus please shift very quickly as i lay my hands on you it is done receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace now go and carry your miracle child madam carry your miracle baby carry it now carry it now my god i tell you i see babies literally in the realm of the spirit carry it now carry it now carry it right now carry it right now miracle 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 there is an unusual grace here there is an unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace as I lay my hands on you, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Heal now. Open up 
the gates in the name of Jesus. Grace, grace, grace. Shabala da bala da ba. Rekete kete. Embroto koto bala da ba. Shabara da bala da ba. Grace, grace, grace. Help them, please. Let's save time. Grace. Receive your miracle, baby. My God, my God, testimonies, wombs opening, fertility be restored, receive it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it, take it, take it, take it, in the name of Jesus, bring it. In the name of Jesus. 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 Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Now, now, out, out of her. Return with your child. Miracles, 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 miracles. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Let it be open. In the name of Jesus. Grace. 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 The Lord is healing irregular menstruation. Irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby. Receive your child out, out of her. Now, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost, let her go now. Keep praying in the spirit, don't just watch miracles, miracles. is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace, 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 grace. Open. Open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. I want a woman to come up. Just 
I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant. You have been having nightmares. Somebody comes to you in the night. You have you even wake up shouting. You've not been able to sleep. There is a pregnant woman here with that situation. God wants to set you free. Please, where are you? If you care for you, can come and God will set you free right now. You are pregnant, but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams. Like a nightmare. Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself. For someone. Shela kurata subrege di balalaba. Embre koto shkala bariada subrati shikaria. Rendo salebre di shikaria di balalaba. Ambroto subroto shobre de gedi balalaba. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing, like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like a, a living, a real object. Please wish that I have to pray for you. Like I said, if you have the courage, there's nothing to be ashamed. What, who is this one? Why is she here? Coughing out? No, no, no. Don't bring her. In Jesus' name, you okay. Come. In Jesus' name, it is done. The Lord sets you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. I need to pray for that lady. Honestly, this is a serious thing. In fact, it's not just one. I'm seeing two of you. Come and stand here. Something, it looks like a worm, but it's bigger than it. You see it. It comes out and goes back on its own. Who is that? You're the one. God bless you for your courage. Can you celebrate her? Don't be afraid. See, look, let me tell you. This is, this is like a spiritual hospital. So this is not a place. Immediately I saw it. Even me, I honestly, I, my body was doing me one kind, but I thought you have to say this is bad. It's like a doctor. Madam, and you love God. Oh. Don't be afraid. Huh? Do you know this thing? Where are you from? Because I'm looking at you. You are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing. Let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm saying. Say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dad, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster that will want your life to keep going without achievement. I'm praying for you now. May that devil live your life forever in the name of Jesus. The spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of Jesus. I use her as a point of contact. This is a nice woman. She didn't bargain for this and she loves God. Are you seeing that now? Who knows, probably you were trained by white men or she speaks very intelligently. But everything grounded. Hold my hand, man. To a point that, that, do you know what it means? Another object, did you plant an object in your body? Comes out through you at will, goes back at will. For those of you who think witchcraft is not real, you are joking. You are watching one right now. Not pile, oh. I'm not talking of pile. Hold my hands, my hands. I'm angry in my spirit. In the name of the Lord God that I serve, I speak to you from the depth of my spirit. Right now, I command that devil, let her go now. Out! Out! In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on your stomach. I command that wicked spirit, whatever your name is, don't only leave her, pack your load with you. And go out of this woman's life. 
I restore you even physiologically in the name of Jesus Christ this old face is not your own you are not that old I change it in the name of Jesus Christ help her give Jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of Jesus over in the name of Jesus it's over in the name of Jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here I'm seeing in a vision the power of God will land on you 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 may not even be expecting it not everybody this, this is an, like an elderly woman but I'm seeing an anointing right now wherever you are father something will land it's like fire it will land on one mama now supernatural grace you will start laying hands on the sick oh that's the woman there help her help her please bring her here supernatural anointing supernatural anointing for the for barrenness look at this look at this this is an elderly woman for God's sake Shera taba roto koto baradia, lembra bata tatso kedia, ekara takata la totia. Father, take her to that level. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace, and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. Daddy. Why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir? For barrenness? You? Where is your wife, sir? She is here, but I can't locate her. Now. Madam, come. You will see a man like, hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child? You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife? Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real. Our daddy's children would have been married now. With their own children. Ejimi, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child. You will have children. 
listen sir i'm not saying god told me to tell you i am telling you there is something called a prophet's reward in the name that is above all names i speak over your life that force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity i cancel it right now yeah. sir you are struggling financially i have to pray for you god wants to open a door for you i, I hope you're not embarrassed sir, that i'm talking to you please hold my hands jesus please change our daddy's story let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now in the name of jesus christ i pray amen now please we're going to be very fast you are here for yourself you are not married you are standing for something. in the name of jesus christ supernatural miracle now we're going to be very fast you can see it's past nine but there are so many things we need to do we're going to do two things at the same time all those who are here trusting God for any miracle, any miracle aside from barrenness, except if you have another thing, I don't care what it is. Please, you are going to come. There are men of God here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly. It's a miracle service. Now, look at this. I want you to organize yourself. Uh, those outside, hold on, please, hold on. Overflow two. Just walk right to the front. You don't have to come here overflow to the whole of those occupying the roadside just walk right to the front of your your stage there overflow one here just walk right to the front here all those who are here you can just come out come out organize yourself you are sick or you are standing in for people jesus listen if you are standing here for impartation go back please 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 don't make a fool of yourself we are going to pray for i know some of you just want me to touch you there's nothing wrong with you don't play games with god go back to your seat you will receive impartation some of you there's nothing wrong you just want in case if there's something i should still pray go back please we don't have that time are we together now i'm not joking please there is no time huh so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people huh? almost everybody look at standing for somebody the devil wants to destroy people have you noticed that in the last one month there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses someone who just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again that devil is a liar in the name of jesus and i also understand there have been mysterious accidents you are minding your business car will jam you bike will jam you we are going to take care of all those things today it's called a miracle service now this is what will happen please and please anybody who lays hands on you just go back to your seat believing in faith we don't have time to take testimonies i know there are so many miracles if we do that we're going to spend time here there are other things we need to do are we together now so i will pray for you you can see there are so many people uh let's do it this way pastor pete is with me here so um pastor pete ah no edgy you know what edgy pastor femi you can go outside you can just handle that that one there pastor alpha pastor alpha kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor Ejimi, and you and who you and pastor femi yes we are not just don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace are we together pastor alpha please outside kenny mike promise west promise join Ejimi, promise femi and and pastor jimmy outside please just guide them protocol they, so that don't relay anybody please behave yourself don't disturb anybody i'm here with pastor pete benga we are going to pray in the name that is above all names shout amen, amen. father we are standing in unity from three different points you have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people lord every man of god represented here as we lay hands on your people it doesn't matter what the situation is 
let there be healing let there be deliverance in the name of jesus christ as we minister to you any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out in the name of jesus christ please guys we have to be very fast so that we'll save time pastor sir thank you so much worship help us please we'll be very fast now all those sitting and around those online just connect by faith there's nobody touching you physically but the holy ghost is there he's representing us and he will touch you while that is happening concurrently please your miracle um uh your prayer request pass it ushers if you can connect yourself i know that there are not many of you protocol you can help them please pass your prayer request if someone sent a text to you now you can copy it quickly please pass your prayer request while laying hands on you if they give you a prophetic word receive it please guys don't waste time on one person let's just do it fast jesus will give you praise I have no other God but you. Now, I have no other God but you. Right now, and you have done what no man has done. Please, as they pray for you, just quietly go back to your seat. Rejoice in. Go back to your seat. Check yourself.
sure you're submitting your prayer requests. Make sure you're submitting your prayer requests. And then when they pray for you, you don't have to go back to another line. Once they pray for you, I'd like you to believe you will see God is doing miracles. Your prayer requests. I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason. 
the Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now? Praise the Lord. There is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before before we come to prayer. I know there are people. How far have we gone? Those outside? There's still a number of people. Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jakes. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one. And then, um, ushers, please, let's have the request so that we can finish it because I, I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, you do mighty, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name, you do mighty. for worship a strong unction David down the Lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing an anointing it will come upon you pare sufre tinda ilo si predia rekito fiesta kila handa ha ora ke te supelenda pragadose rekete ga baka kokosho ke palagana renda pa preia so palenda ha Resa profilesa kalionde para soko palagada. I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground. It will come upon the feet of many now. Upon the feet of many, the fire of God will come upon your feet. The fire of God will burn your feet. There's a fire quickening. My God. Palio friesa kiata laronte barus ikateli.
Tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend bringing messages to you. Tonight, 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 tonight by the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are standing here in the midst of Yeah, I sent the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And as we worship you, we build your throne. And as we worship you, we build your throne. Jesus, and take, take your place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We are going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We are praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in your divine wisdom. When you wanted to communicate to us the mysteries of your will. Lord you wrote it down for us to read. In the same vein oh God. Your sons and your daughters gathered across the nations. Those that are here. Those that are across the world. From the internet. They have written their own requests, understanding the mystery of the scribes. That whatever is written has a spiritual significance. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we release the angels that respond to the prayers of men. The angels in Revelations chapter 8 that burn those prayers as incense and they ascend to the throne room of God right now by the power of god let those angels move swiftly in the name of jesus an angel appeared unto daniel and said i have come because of your word 
Father, let angels respond according to this request. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing here written will go back unanswered. We prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availed much. Father, we are on our knees on this mountain, at this altar, bringing this request before the throne room of God. And the Bible says, he that goeth before the throne boldly shall come back, O God, with results and answers, and the grace and the mercies of God shall be released. Right now, we release grace. And Lord, we release mercy. In the name of Jesus, every prayer written in this ground, upon this mountain, it is answered. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Aside from those that are still praying for peace, everybody rise up. Please rise up quickly. Rise up to receive a prophecy and the impartation. Two things we'll do at once, just two, three minutes, and then we're done. Please make sure you wait to the end of the service so that you listen to every announcement. I want to pray. We want to, every miracle service is a platform to activate grace. You have seen certain dimensions of God, but there's more. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you and I'll join it with the prophecy. This is the second to the last miracle service for the year. So don't be careless about it. Open up your spirit. There are people here who have been crying and say, Lord, I know there can be a new dimension of grace. I have seen your hand in my life, but I want to see a greater level. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Drink of a new fountain of grace. Help him, please. Drink of a new fountain of grace. I activate the gifts of the spirit at the count of four. One, two, three, four. Step into it. Eyes be open, ears open. Receive impartations. Receive impartations. Receive grace, grace. Impartation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The kind of favor that you have not seen from the start of this year till now. On this mountain tonight, I invoke it upon your spirit. May that favor come upon you. I call the heavens to bear witness that you are a carrier of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Where it has worked for others and has refused to work for you, I declare the grace that makes things work the power of performance. Receive it right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Everything dead in your life. I don't care what and I don't care how long. In the name of the one who raised from the dead. I command that thing to come back to life. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. Tonight, like Pastor Jake prayed, revelations of strategies from the realm of the spirit. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Supernatural impartation. I pray for you. Everyone here who wants to start a business, start a company, start something, any value adding platform. I prophesy upon you the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it every student here hear me I program your spirit to rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus on common understanding on common illumination any final year student here who it looks as if you are not going from the look of things in the name of Jesus we change it here right now believe God we change it now we change it now we change it from your faculty 
we change it from your department by the authority of the kingdom in the name of Jesus anyone here carrying any track record of bad luck it works for others until it gets to your turn then there must be stories I separate you and bad luck forever. I separate you and tragedy forever. Hallelujah. This spirit that came to Zaria that is causing men to be sick, hear my voice. There is a platform where ambassadors are in this kingdom therefore i stand apostolically and prophetically we fortify the spiritual borders of this city and we punish such operations in the name of jesus may you and your kind be banished from this city in the name of jesus that spirit that brings accident and untimely death looming around our territory no 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 zaria is a place of light it's not the place where any spirit will come and loom and i speak prophetically across this place every spirit of untimely death hear my voice in the name of jesus i command the gates closed over you i command the gates closed over you not by accident not by bomb blast the gate closes over you everything that has left your hand that left your life that should not have left i don't care where it went to i call it back may it gather its kind and come to you i say it again everything that has left your life has left your hands may it gather its kind and return back to you listen anyone here who the devil has taunted spiritually financially in influence you are not rising for whatever reason in the name of jesus i force you to rise in the name of Jesus, I force you to grow. If there is anybody in this place, from January till now, you have not stood here to testify, I prophesy to you, now and the next 30 days, may it be your turn to stand here. Believe me, believe me, now and the next 30 days, may you stand here to testify. Anyone here called jobless, or you are doing a job that is not a job, any nonsense thing around that is not bringing you tangible, sizable benefit in the name of Jesus. I don't know where the jobs are. We create vacancies and put you there. We create vacancies and put you there. Any man or woman who said over his dead body for you to succeed, I declare their prayers answered tonight. I declare their prayers answered tonight. I pray for you. Listen, there is a mantle of honor upon this house. And if you belong to this family, it should be evident in your life. And in case it's not yet working, like a programming in a computer, like an antivirus, I place that mantle of honor upon you. May it shield you from shame. May it may it shield you from shame. Hallelujah. Every spiritual life that has died here no more passion for the things of God no more passion for prayer no more passion for the word of God I plant in you a fresh passion tonight fresh passion tonight we're rounding up every family represented here 
that has not had a reason to smile this year it's been tears and tears from home every time they call you from home one episode of bad luck may this be the first good news you will hear good news of breakthrough good news of increase good news of speed in the name of Jesus Christ whoever rises up to find you may the God that I serve even in the secret may he fight them we are rounding up I pray for you barrenness or its kind looming around your life looming around your environment whether in your body whether in your finances whether in the works of your hands in your ministry in your business I pray for you the water that flows that makes the barren plant to receive strength and begin to rise and become a great tree I introduce that water into your life therefore I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus be fruitful be fruitful multiply multiply replenish subdue and may you command absolute dominion absolute dominion help them please every strange nightmare strangers roaming around your sleep not allowing you to enjoy the sleep that the saints should enjoy disturbing you oppressing you sleeping with you manipulating your dreams confusing you you don't know whether it's god speaking or it's the devil in the name of jesus i banish those strangers from your life forever i banish those strangers from your life forever in the name of jesus christ and i pray finally for you there is a spirit of increase there is a spirit that causes men to prosper there is a mantle that brings wealth from the east the north the south you have the value but you need the access you have the value already you are not a non-entity you already have what to give but the other side of the exchange is what you are looking for from the east to the west to the north to the south whoever must show up in your life in the next 30 days to be a ladder for you to climb to the next level I prophesy and I call them into your destiny I prophesy and I call them into your destiny there's someone here God is giving you a word go and register a company and just keep it you may not know what to do with it but just keep it keep it and give God space to use it and surprise you that's a prophetic word for somebody here just register it and keep it you there is no business to source for don't worry register it and keep it and give God space to surprise you may that happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ every circle of continual suffering where you think you are about to rise up another episode of trouble I declare where the devil put a comma I change it to a full stop never again never again never again in the name of Jesus Christ you're here you need Jesus you're saying man of God I've watched the things that the Holy Spirit has done I have seen the transformation keep standing please no sitting no moving around let's stand up please keep standing you're here and you're saying apostle I want you to pray for me I love Jesus Christ but for some reason my life has gone haywire I cannot say that I'm truly enjoying relationship and fellowship with him and there are others who are saying man of God this is the first time I've always mocked at the things of God I've never really been serious but now I'm making up my mind for Jesus overflow one overflow two all following us online wherever you are I know that our time is gone but let's honor Jesus
we cannot end this meeting without giving this opportunity wherever you are don't wait for anybody to come be the first i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here i want to lead you to jesus jesus is already talking to some people god bless you as you come god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there are people outside run like there's fire on the mountain don't stroll around run like there's fire on the mountain one i'll count one to five and that will be it. two lord i give you my three please we're out of time run run to jesus i live for A fresh start, a new beginning. Will you have your way? I give you my heart. Hallelujah. If you are still coming, please rush and join them. It should not take a long time. If you are still indecisive, then just remain at your seat. By now you should know where you stand when the titanic sank there were only two lists those who were saved those who were lost if you are not sure you are saved come out and join them because it means that you are not you are not safe you should be very sure if you are a man of god is like i think i'm safe come and join them and get a very uh, a, a high level of certainty to know that you are in christ in the name of jesus i appreciate everyone daddy thank you for coming and all those who have come to make this decision please understand you are not reciting a poem don't be emotional about it this is a simple decision but it's the greatest miracle you are opening up your heart to the life of god the bible says and this life is in his son it says he that hath the son hath eternal life say this after me with all your heart and sincerely say lord jesus i love you with all my heart tonight i come to you and i declare that you receive my life and manage it for me i receive your life into my spirit i declare that from today jesus is my lord my savior my friend and my king i declare that satan has no power over my life i'm a child of god i'm born again in the name of jesus christ father i stretch my hands towards these great precious people bless them let this decision be genuine and let this be the beginning of great days in their lives i anoint you with grace I command that you begin to see the faithfulness and the goodness of God in the land of the living. I plant in you like a virus, a hunger for the things of God. And I declare that it will override every other passion in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision that you have made. Now hold on please. I want you to do two things for me. Number one, the Bible says, They that be planted in the house of the Lord, it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Visiting the house of God is not the key to consistency. You must settle down and receive the word. Our prayer meetings are um, Tuesdays, except for this week, we're making a little adjustment. I'm going to bring an announcement on that shortly. But you can be part of it for at least one month so that you can build your spiritual life. And then I want you to follow... The gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details and then they'll warmly follow you up on our behalf and the lord will bless you in jesus name please this way all of you god bless you god bless you in jesus name koinonia are you appreciating them hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. 
And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.